Hi, this is Joe, and thanks for coming back for another video. In this video, we're going to be taking the front forks, disassembling them, and we're going to be putting uh, new fork seals and possibly bushings, depending upon the condition. So, we're going to overhaul these forks, and the first thing we did was we uh, took the compression dampening screw and backed it all the way off, turned it uh, counterclockwise, and now we're going to pull the cover uh, off the top of the forks and we're going to start our disassembly. So let's get started. So I've never disassembled Suzuki forks before. So um, I have my manual instructions here. So we're going to head, go ahead and follow the uh, instructions. We're going to uh, remove the bolt from the top. What we want to do now is unscrew the end cap and as you notice there is a larger nut here that's three quarters of an inch and underneath is 19 millimeters. What we want to do now is unscrew the nut and then at this point okay we've done that let's put this in our parts bin and now we can remove the adjuster rod from the top of the forks okay we'll put this off to the side had to get a tougher vise here. We have to put the po bottom portion of the strut into the vise. And then let me show you the piece that we have to unscrew. As you can see at the top of the fork tube, there is a, looks like the inside of a socket. Now Motion Pro makes a tool uh, and this tool fits down in here and then you can use that to unscrew that. There is a way to make a tool. They show it in the Haynes manual, but uh, I didn't want to make that tool, so I just purchased this. Unfortunately, this Motion Pro tool is very expensive. It's like $75. So I didn't want to hassle making, making the tool, so I just purchased it. Uh, it's for uh, one side is 43 millimeter the other side is 41 here's the 43 millimeter side here's the 41 millimeter side the uh, forks on a 2014 uh, GSXR 750 are 41 millimeters so we're going to go ahead and try to uh, loosen this up here Okay, they refer to this as a damper. So let's go ahead and remove the damper. And let's set this off to the side. Now it says we can uh, pour the oil from the uh, forks. So let's go ahead and pour out the old crusty oil. The manual recommends rebuilding one fork at a time. You don't want to interchange the components between the fork tubes as it can cause undue wear. So we're going to rebuild one fork, assemble it back together, and then uh, do the other fork. First step is to gently pry out the dust seal from the forks. I'm going to do that without trying to scratch any of the chrome plated surfaces. Okay, we got the dust seal out and now inside of here, I'll flip the forks over in a minute so we can take a peek 
in there is a a retaining ring inside this fork tube that we have to remove then we can pull that retaining ring out so let me flip this around put it in the vise inside the fork tube here is the retaining ring right here we're going to go in and we're going to gently pry on that ring and as you see we pop that ring out so now we can remove that ring to get the two bushings apart you basically compress the forks a little and then give it a good wrap I did this to test it and they came apart before I could videotape it but as you can see here as we pull this apart here's the one bush and there's the other bush right there so we were able to remove the inner tube from the outer tube so the next step is we're going to remove the bushes and inspect the bushes they may have to be replaced and I'll show you what to look for here is the top bushing here is the lower bushing they each have a little slit here and then let me rotate it around so you can see that one there's that one they say to take a screwdriver and gently pry that apart to the point to where you can slide the bushing off the shaft There, we got it up out of the indentation. Now, let's see, we have to s separate it again. And then we can hopefully slide it off the shaft. But it is being difficult. There we go. Okay, we got the the bush off. We'll look inside here and we'll inspect these in a moment. Now we can pull off the inner bush. Notice that the outer bush is wider than the inner bush so remember that so when we put these back together we get them in the correct orientation we're going to remove the dust seal and the uh, fork seal and there's a metal washer here make sure you look at the order of these because when we put the new seals back on we want to put them on in this order so we can now take them up looking at both sides of this this uh, bearing seal here uh, it looks the same on both sides so and reading through the instructions there doesn't appear to be a particular way this seal has to go on so we're going to pull that out very carefully look at that we're going to pull all these the bushing the dust seal off and this washer off and then we're going to clean up the forks and then we're going to inspect the forks for any damage we're going to look at the bushings and then we're also going to do a run out test on the on the inner portion of the fork looking at the fork seal here there is a line that was manufactured into this seal and the line is facing toward the opening of the fork tube so when we put the new seals on we're going to follow the same procedure so let's go ahead and pop that off I'm going to take note of that 
notice it looks the same on both sides. There's a little metal spring on the inside of that ridge. So again, we're going, when we put the new seal back on, we're going to put this ring facing toward the open end of the fork tube. Okay, pull the seal out, the dust seal out. Now we're going to clean up the forks with some uh, brake cleaner and then we'll do some inspecting. After cleaning all the components, we're now going to do some measuring and inspecting. First thing we want to do is check the spring free length. And uh, the minimum measurement is 228 and the standard measurement is 233.3 and it says you don't want it to go too small so that would be 228 I would imagine as the spring starts to wear it starts to compress so if we measure the spring length we're getting just under 240 millimeters so that looks like that is within spec so 228 is minimum 233.3 is standard doesn't give a maximum so I'm saying in the manual it says uh, you're looking toward the minimum so you don't want to go under the minimum so that spring looks okay now one thing we want to do is look at the bearing surfaces now this is the outer bearing surface. If you look inside, it'll be hard. You'll see that there's a copper colored bearing surface. And if you look at that surface, it's all been worn away. There's a lot of blotches and things in there. Notice right there, there's a big plain space right there. That copper has worn away. If we look at a new bushing Notice there's copper all the way around. If we look at the inner bushing, notice the shiny portion and the copper portion. The copper portion has worn away. If we look at a new inner bushing, notice the copper is all the way around. So in this case, we want to replace these bushings because they're too worn. Now the bike has 16, just about 16,000 miles. So that is a good indication that uh, it's the right time to rebuild these forks. On the damper, you want to check this o-ring right here or some type of a washer I don't think it's an o-ring you want to make sure that's not scored or tore up at all you want to make sure there's no damage to this at all and on the assembly here you want to check this washer right here that it is not damaged you want to make sure that this shaft is not bent make sure everything looks good no damage at all scores heat marks or anything so that's looking good next thing we want to do is we want to check the surface of the chrome on the inner fork tube you want to make sure there's no pitting scoring scratches anything like that that could cause the seal to allow oil to pass so this is looking really nice and shiny notice I did clean it up with the solvent so you always want to do your inspecting after you do all your cleaning so another thing we're going to test here is the run out now I looked in the manual in the Hayes manual and it does not indicate what the run out is supposed to be so it looks like they missed that in the manual but we're going to go ahead and do a run out to make sure that the inner fork tube is not bent at all now i'm going to set up my dial indicator uh, normally uh, you would do this on a surface plate with a dial indicator and some v-blocks 
this right here is a V-block. So I'm going to set the fork tube on two V-blocks and put the dial indicator on it and we're going to measure it just to see and we're going to measure it in three locations down at the lower end in the center and out at the the upper end we want to make sure there's no bends in this inner fork tube so let's get that set up and I'll show you how we're going to do this we have the dial indicator set up and uh, this is real tricky to do the fork tube is weighted at the aft and you have to be very careful not to move the shaft from side to side. Ideally you would want to have this on a surface plate and have these V-blocks not moving. So as you turn it you don't get any side to side play otherwise it's going to impact your reading. So what you want to do is put the dial indicator right in the center and you want to come in with your adjustment and bring it down to where the needle just touches the surface and then you want to rotate the shaft but again you want to make sure you don't get any side to side play because it will impact your measurement and I'm pushing down on the shaft to try to keep that side to side play from occurring if it does slide on you just put it back pick up where you left off and then keep on rotating. As you notice here we're getting virtually no run out on the inner fork tube. So and this is up at the upper portion of the tube. Okay now let's raise the dial indicator. Let's move it down toward the center of the tube. We've repositioned the dial indicator to the center of the fork tube. We're now going to lower the dial indicator pointer back down to where it's touching the tube. Each line is a half a thousand so it's very sensitive. And again we're going to move this. You don't want any side to side play. If you get some just basically pick up where you left off and we're not getting much movement at all. Okay, let's reposition the dial indicator down near the bottom of the fork tube. We've now repositioned the dial indicator toward the bottom of the fork tube. We're now going to bring the dial indicator tip just in contact. and then we're going to very gently rotate without trying to get any and as you see I'm getting some side to side play so you have to try to read between that we're noticing we're only getting about a half a thousandth run out which is very very small run out And I notice I let it slip there a little bit. So we just come back there. See? Okay, so we've gone all the way around. There's very minimal run out on the fork inner tube. So this particular fork is not bent. It's looking really good. We've inspected all the components. Uh, we're going to replace the bushings. Uh, what we can do now is we can start the reassembly with the new bushings, the new dust seal, and the new fork seal. So let's go back over to the other bench and let's start the reassembly.